I'm a professor at the Faculty of Kinesiology and Cummings School of Medicine at the University of Calgary, and I chair the uh, Canadian uh, IOC uh, Sport Injury Prevention Research Centre. Uh, so the focus of uh, our research um, and knowledge translation program has really been around uh, addressing the burden of sport injury in youth. Um, these are the kids that are participating in sport now and we want to make sure that they uh, have an opportunity for lifetime participation in sport and physical activity. Um, so we've focused on uh, really evaluating uh, prevention strategies um, across the spectrum, looking at uh, training strategies, uh, policy and rules of the game as well as equipment um, and then across the continuum so not just primary prevention but also secondary prevention of recurrent injury uh, as well as long-term consequences of injury and concussion. Yeah, so I think there's an increasing uh, body of evidence related to sports specialization in youth and uh, certainly um, in some sports and uh, certainly in Canada uh, and the US, um, kids have the opportunity to play at quite elite levels of play very early. Um, that comes along with um, huge time commitment to one sport. In practices and games, for example, in, in youth ice hockey, um, there's not a lot of opportunity to participate in other sports. Um, and so I I think when we uh, look at you know gross motor skill development and we look at injury risk, we look at load. Um, I think that becomes a real problem uh, in terms of uh, injury risk, both acute injuries as well as uh, chronic injuries such as tendinopathies, for example. So I think if you uh, speak to some of our Olympic athletes now and they talk about their experience uh, in their youth, they were playing all sorts of sports, which is why we have athletes that actually compete in more than one, one sport. And I think that, um, that that's not happening as much now, uh, certainly. And, uh, it's really unfortunate because we see kids that uh, are injured, they can't go back to a particular sport, but they don't have any um, experience uh, or any practice in, in other sports. So especially in youth, they're hesitant to take that up. So we see about a 8% dropout um, from organized sport every year. And as we know, the, the more significant uh, epidemic that's associated with injury is actually decreased levels of physical activity and, and obesity. So it was really exciting to have the opportunity to come here and uh, it's really nice um, that we now have uh, two centres in North America, um, two IOC centres uh, focused on research in injury and illness uh, prevention in athletes and, and I would say that our, uh, the focus areas that we have in the two different centres in Canada and the US are complementary. So I think there's a huge opportunity here for, for collaboration um, and uh, you know we can do a lot more together than we can do uh, independently. So. I really look forward to, to some of those opportunities. The opportunity to work with so many different people across different disciplines is really critical and I see a similar philosophy here as we have in Canada uh, in that regard and I think that it's, um, it's going to be really important to, to answer some of those really difficult questions, um, particularly as they relate to uh, primary prevention and prevention of consequences of injury. You know, it no longer are the days that we're, um, as a scientific community, successful uh, in our own little bubbles, in our own little areas, and I think it's really important, uh, uh, and, and the granting agencies see that too, um, and you see a lot more opportunity for team grants and programmatic grants, um, where it's critically important to not only have the interdisciplinary researchers, but also have those community partners um, who are essential in, uh, in, in really ch the, ch the translation of the work we're doing, but also in helping us to um, ask the right questions um, that will have context for them in terms of implementation.